right, so welcome everybody to this very special edition to Are You a Mutant? The live event. I've seen the greatest minds of Generation X, Y, Z, and Millennials spin out into madness. The madness of conspiracies that left them reeling in confusion. So here's to those who think calmly outside the box. Here's to the wild women, men, and multidimensional androgyny, the star seed, the artist, the misfits, the outcast, the rebels. They always know how to bend the rules. See a line, but not follow it. Notice the path, but go a different way. See through the layers of darkness, control, manipulation, and confusion. You can knock them down from the pedestal, call them names, or maybe quote their genius. You sometimes glorify them or make fun of them, but what you cannot do is make them fall into place. These are the people who once they break the common boundary, they mutate things, create a new path for others to follow behind. You might notice them as the freaks, but that's not what we see. We see the brilliance in them. Because those dreamers who believe something needs to be different and demand to live uniquely as themselves rather than follow along are the ones who change the world. Here's to those misfits. We see your genius. Outcasts, artists, rebels, light workers, I am calling you. And for those of you who don't know, I'm asking you, are you a mutant too? Event. So we have something really, really special for you guys today. So first off, I want to tell you that we have Lauren and we have Vicky here with us today. As you guys know, Lauren has been my co-host through this journey and she is going to assist me today as well. One of the things we really wanted to do is we wanted to bring forward one of our mutants. Um, now, both Vicki and Lauren have been doing my certification course. We just now almost completed level four. And then we also did an experience through the dream rave. The dream rave is what happens to your design when you sleep. You have an entirely different chart when you're sleeping. And as we were going through this dream rave experience, and I'm going to let Vicky share it more. And then, of course, um, Lauren and I are going to expose her chart and share a little bit about it. But as we were going through the dream course, we had some, it was actually a combination of going through the dream course and also going through the level four certification. And we had all this magic happening in the course. We had all of this synchronicity and all of these experiences happening and then Vicky is having all this magic happening in her life I had wanted to bring forward the dream code on information which I didn't realize it was different Vicky had been doing her own frigging research on the codons and Vicky birthed new information from my opinion that is not being done in human design anywhere I searched, I'm a researcher, I looked and I looked and I looked, and no one else is talking about the codons and the way she is bringing through the intel. We really wanted to give her a platform to download all the things that have been happening for her through this journey. While this was happening in our level four, we were also um, exploring the highest potential of people's business design. And she is an innovator in business, which is very, very obvious in who she is. She's got CEO energy. And we were, I was seeing this coming through, the CEO mutating um, energy in big businesses. And I was like, oh my God, this is so frigging important. And so first, what I want to do is I want to start by asking Vicki to share just a little bit about herself and her journey with the codons. And then Lauren, I want you to chime in on this journey as well before we go into the mutant question. So Vicki, off to you. Okay, well, um, first of all, I'm living in Austin, Texas right now, and I just started my own human design business, Your Unique You. Um, and of course, unique is spelled Y-O-U-N-I-Q-U-E because as a mutant, I couldn't spell it the right way. Um, but I started my journey about six years ago, unbeknownst to me. 
I was, I'm a line six, my whole life fell apart. I had no idea that this happens with the line six. I was in a metaphysical shop because all of this magic started opening up around me. It was scary. And I walked into a metaphysical shop looking for answers and the human design book literally fell off the shelf onto my foot. Two weeks later, I joined a master class and Raquel was in the master class and she was talking about human design. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. She's into this, you know, human design stuff. Well, over the next five years, my life was just filled with synchronicity that for the life of me, I could not understand. And every time I'd look around, I'd see the words, the book, the book. And I thought, am I supposed to write a book? What is going on? And then one day I was cleaning or something and I had earlier seen the book and I looked up and there was the human design book and I opened it and all of a sudden the cars that had been stalking me, the vehicles, the words, the keys, all of these things just came to life for me. And I understood what spirit had brought to me years earlier. And then as things happen in my life, a day or two later, Raquel comes across my page and I clicked in and the next thing you know, I was going to Tulum for a um, retreat. And then in the last, I guess the retreat in Tulum was last September. So since last September, I've gone through levels one through four in the dream wave. I'm getting ready for PHS. And I have realized, um, because it's come really quickly for me, but I have been in training for the past several years. Like this was a life path for me. I'm a four, six and, um, it all came together. I kind of met my tribe and it's just incredible things have been happening. I joined the dream rave, not really even understanding why I was joining it because it was for where I was at at the time it was so far above my head but just incredible things started happening for me like Lauren and I had dreams that that uh, mirrored one another and we were able to bring answers through and during the dream rave class I became interested in the codons I had run across um, Ra's intel on the codons and I read through it and I didn't understand any of it. So I said to Derek Hell and I'm like, do you understand any of this? And I never really heard back from her. And then when we were in dream rave, she brought it through and I'm like, oh, here's the codons again. Because a lot of times I, it's sort of a precogger of what is to come, but I don't really understand it. So she brought it in and we started looking at the dream chart and comparing it to our human design blueprint. And Raquel found what she was calling Achilles heel gates. And these are gates that are in the dream rave that we don't have in our waking chart. And we were just, for some reason, I don't know why, but my Achilles heel gate was gate five. And I looked up the amino acid it said and it said therony and so I started just researching therony and it came back and said people with this amino acid problem have crepey skin bad teeth which my skin just all of a sudden started getting really loose and I was having dental problems but then it went on because a year earlier I had gone to the doctor she put me on um, medication for vitamin d deficiency she told me I had the start of a fatty liver and I have, uh, six years ago, I developed a patch of psoriasis on my back and a little bit at my hairline. And she gave me a cream for this, for the psoriasis and sent me on my way. Well, when I started researching, it says problems with the liver can be caused by theranine and result in a lack of vitamin D and can result in skin issues amongst other things. And I went, oh my God, this was a smoking gun. Like this was everything in front of her. Why didn't my doctor know about this? So then I come to class and 
I, I go on this deep dive. I start researching every freaking amino acid out there. I start looking up things for my friends and every amino acid where they had an Achilles heel gate or it has now expanded into several things. They had the disease, my girlfriend with ALS and phenylalanine, my girlfriend with MS, and, and she has two Achilles heel gates, and they both have to do with muscles, and she has seizures. And so I just kept going through and finding it. So I come to class all excited, and I'm like, I, and I'm sending everybody my research, and I'm thinking, like, this is the coolest thing in the world, and it's like crickets. Like, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, then Andrea in the class, Says, you know, Vicki, I saw your email and I looked up my Achilles heel gate and I have the same medical problems with that gate. And it was like that triggered Raquel and she just kind of lit up and then it just has snowballed from there. So, yeah, because I mean, here's the thing for me is like, I, this is mutative information. You don't see it until you see it. You know what I mean? And I was just getting, it was the first time I taught the codons. So the information, when I first start teaching, it's just starting to, to download. And so when I did the first class on the codons, Vicky's sending me all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> like, it's too much. Like, and then we do the first, it was too much to understand. It's not too much. Okay, let me let me clarify that. It's friggin' not too much. It was too much for me at that moment to understand. Then I present the first piece of material and Andrea is in the class and she's like, oh my God, you're not gonna believe this. This is the issue that I've been having my whole life. And then her issue, I found two friends that have the same issue and they had the same Achilles heel gait. Now, let me back this up for one minute, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, Lauren. Um, Vicki got me really excited. I want to back this up just for a second on what is an Achilles heel, because many of you listening in may have no idea what the, what we're talking about here. So the dream rave, one of the most important pieces of the dream rave that is different from any dream information, dream symbology, anything you're going to learn in any dream class comes from, of course, Ra Uruhu, the founder of human design, who, of course, is a number one mutant. He said that the most important thing you need to understand about the dream rave is that it's a programming agent. OK, so think of the matrix <laughs> and through the dream rave, they're programming you to stay asleep. And the Achilles heel is the place where you're the deepest in your programming. Now, you can also see this in human design as a not-self theme, a place in your chart where you're in your not-self. But in the dream, it happens in a place that you don't even freaking know about in your waking chart because it's deeper and more profound. And so this is not something that's common human design knowledge. It's not something that you see all the time. But when we, did, when we started to see the Achilles heel, one of the other girls in the class said, oh, I have this issue with arthritis, but it's in this gate over here. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that's about because it wasn't the Achilles heel, but it was the deepest conditioning when we looked again in her chart, which is the splits. And then we're like, okay. And then Vicky just started discovering all kinds of things like that where you are sensitive in your waking, as well as the Achilles heel gate, where that codon comes in with those particular sensitivities that you might be having. So I just want to preface this by saying human design is an experiment. Human design is a process of mutation. This is not something Ra talks about. Richard Rudd talks about codons as well, does not bring in the codons. I really honestly believe that this is Vicky birthing this new information and it's the leading edge in human design and she's designed to do this. Okay. And so Lauren, what's your experience with the whole thing? <laughs> My experience with the dream rave class was that it really shed light on these deeply unconscious things that are inside of us that we're not aware are even running us. And 
I, I, when I tapped into my own Achilles heel, it made complete sense and it was not immediately linked with a health issue. However, upon going deeper, I'm like, oh, there it is. That's interesting. So Vicky, when she, it was really interesting to watch everybody in the class and Vicky's process in particular with how her learning of human design was so accelerated from Tulum and all those classes and just, she did not stop. And she found the codons and this whole world opened up. And like you, Raquel, it was way over my head. Like, I know Vicky's a genius. I respect her so much. And I was still like, I don't understand these codons at all, but I'm on this journey and I'm open to learning. And, and it was really exciting to witness the mutation take place and everybody's experience with that and what that ended up inspiring within me is because um, my health has been something that's been really important to me. My like for a huge part of my life, like a health crisis is what helped me have a spiritual awakening and looking at the spiritual and emotional reasons behind that, like Vicky just created this whole other layer to look into and to heal and whatever, whatever it is that the individual decides to do with the experiment in this information. So it was just a really invigorating way to look at healing and the body and these compulsions that we have and our unconscious choices that lead to not self behavior, all of that. So. Yeah. It's so interesting because as you're talking, I want to add one more point here. One of the things that Lauren and I have in common is we have one tribal and one individual. And so as I've been going through this process of launching the book and are you immune and all of these themes, I started to realize that this combination of tribal and individual is when you're accepted by the tribe, but you have to have the mutant energy at the tribal table. I, we've learned in life how to kind of do this. We've learned how to sit at the table and be accepted, but they don't see parts of us. So we're like, hey, you better see this part because we're, you know, and we wouldn't be at the table um, unless they did see this part. Well, Vicky doesn't have that luxury. And when we show you her chart, you'll understand why. So the key for us is to be able to open the floor in this human design tribe and say something new is coming, new information, new unique mutation and make room at the table for this intel. That's what I feel like is happening right here. And to me, it feels really, really big. And whether anyone else jumps on this video and this information is beyond me, I have no idea, but we need to bring it out to the public. So what I'm thinking, Vicki, what I'd like to do more is I'd like to pull up some of your PowerPoints and have you kind of explore show us and kind of walk us through a little bit more of the depth of the codons and where you're at so that we can, I feel that that's more important right now than anything else, just to go deeper in this intel, because this is really, in, it, it's a living, breathing example of mutation. So do you feel that that's a good idea? That's absolutely. And while you're pulling that up, I would just like to say um, thank you for calling me a genius. You know, I don't see it, but I appreciate it. My open throat, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, my open G-Center. I, I just want to make it very clear is I found the link and I can figure out the link from the gates. A lot of times it's intuition that comes up through it also but I'm not the person to do the healing process through this. Like people start asking me what amino acid should I take or what should I do? And that is not my part. And I have put that out to the universe that that next part comes in because I have no medical background whatsoever. I see my part in this as identifying it and me imagine what it could bring to the world if the right people 
take this, pay attention. That means from the day we are born, we know where our health vulnerabilities lie. It's huge. And that's freaking huge. It's freaking huge. And I think that the what we're trying to also bring forward to anybody who's listening in is remember, you need to take on the experiment yourself. And as Vicky's going through some of this information, we are bringing it forward for your contemplation and for you to experiment with. And I agree. I think that if it's something that people can be aware of out the gate, and also you've been experiment, experimenting with actually taking the amino acids and so that would be what people would experiment with as well. So, um, all right, let me go ahead and pull up some of the slides here. And why don't we go ahead and start with the one that you had already mentioned a little bit, but this is so people can see it a little bit better and see the, the charts in the Dream Rave and um, how this is kind of operating. Absolutely. Is my mouse working? Can you see it or? Mm -mm. No. no. Okay. Then I won't. Well, I'll play with it anyhow, because I will. Okay. So this is me. And as you can see on my regular chart, I do not have gate five. Hmm. But when you go to my dream chart, I go from being a, a emotional generator to a reflector. And I have gate five activated. So this is a huge conditioning place for me. And, um, and the contemplation of it. And as a matter of fact, because gate five, I believe, is all about time. And very early in my journey, a friend came to me out of the blue and gave me one of those, those sand things. So even back then, before I knew it, I was being kind of peppered through spirit that there was something up with this. So I, um, no, I'm sorry. Somebody happened to knock at my door. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so it's a deep conditioning gate for me. Well, when I looked up, because if you look to the right, it says I have gate or gate five or yes, gate five, line three. And it's theranine. So when I started doing the research, this is where I found that this has to do with the liver. I had the liver problems. It has an impact on vitamin D. It, um, it works with tooth enamel or teeth in general. And I was, I had just had several thousand dollars worth of teeth surgery. I never had a problem in my life. Almost overnight, the skin on my legs just started getting really loose. And so as I'm reading through this, I was, I could see every single thing. And then the treating depression. Well, I had been in a deep depression for over six years. And so, you know, in the beginning, when I first started human design, I just thought, okay, well, it's my melancholy and I have natural melancholy, but I always fought against it, not understanding but this was part of it. And then it says it's AIDS in digestive and intestinal tract functioning. Well, that's part of the reason why your liver goes bad because you have inflammation. So all of this just led me into more and more research. And I do have another chart up there. Um, if let, you me, wanna... let me back, let me back you up just, some, just for one second. So okay. for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, we want you to know this is advanced human design information, okay? The codons uh, correlate with the DNA coding. And Raw talks about codons, and so does Richard Rudd, more in relation to how certain gates come together that are unrelated and how our fractal is drawn to us through DNA coding. So I just want to kind of make this clarification. However, when you research the codons and you research the, the amino acids, there's a depth of amino acids 
that correlate to illnesses. And this is what we're talking about here. So each one of the codons will link up with certain gates, okay? So, and what we're talking about is if the codon you have links up with the gates, we're not saying that you're going to have an illness, okay? Mm -hmm. What we're saying is in those areas that you're vulnerable, okay, we've seen a correlation, or I should say primarily Vicky spotted a correlation and we witnessed it with our class, with a lot of people, you guys. And for me, when something's happening in my, in my class, I know that there's power because the universe does this to me every class. Synchronicities happen, magic happen, things unfold in ways that you would not believe. And that's what happened with this. It was not just a one-off and it's not just a crazy idea. There was several people in the class and when I brought it out to my inner circle as well, that had the same experience. Okay, so I just want to give you guys some foundation on what we're looking at. Don't just treat the gate and think, oh, I'm going to have a problem. That's not what this is. Yeah, Lauren. Something with that as well, like how we're not saying that someone's going to get an illness. This is just research that Vicky's found and people had experiences show up in their lives Something that's really valuable for me, and Vicki, I think I mentioned this to you, and, and I mentioned it earlier here, is like the metaphysical or the emotional reasons behind illnesses or how it can manifest in the body. And in my, in my spare time with Vicki's research, I've been connecting with what Oh, the medical, the, the metaphysical, not medical, the metaphysical reason or the emotional reason, spiritual reason could, what those underlying factors could be with the illness that's listed. So since it doesn't point to illness, it may point to what's underneath that or what the person may want to look at within themselves. That's just my Give own. Give an example of that, Lauren. So for example, like I'm looking at, um, at Vicky's research right here. Okay, so the liver. When I first started learning about metaphysics, um, liver holds anger. And it it's, can be worth looking at what, you know, may have angered you as a child or in a past life or the things that trigger you that you hold on to, how you internalize anger. Or for my own life, um, I I had uh, asthma for a really, really long time. It's only recently gone away with lots of deep work and supplements and different things. And that has to do with feeling smothered and internalizing grief and not, you know, maybe not being in my mutant power enough and kind of yielding to what the group wanted me to do. So these are, those are just a couple of examples that come. Well, and I'd like to segue on that because I did look at that also. And for like me, psoriasis, it's about not knowing or not accepting yourself. And my psoriasis came along right at the time, excuse me, my marriage fell apart, my career fell apart, everything in my life fell apart. And I have been on this journey trying to find myself because I always had a direction because I was in a nine centered relationship. So I had that direction within the relationship, everything falls apart. And all of a sudden I get sick and I have this open G. So when you look at your charts and your vulnerabilities, a lot of times it comes right up with the metaphysical reason mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So I have noticed that. And I do want to say that you're absolutely correct. Not everybody gets sick. Um, DNA mutations happen in many ways. Most of my friends are my age and I'm finding in all age groups, mm -hmm that most of them my age are experiencing exactly what I'm bringing to them. There are some people that 
don't have issues, but they're in very happy marriages or they're living within their human design or somehow backed into it. Some of them are younger, but there are some younger people with these problems also. So, you know, a DNA mutation happens in several ways. One, it comes through genetics, through your parents and down your family line. So if you're born into a family that's predispositioned to get diabetes, does it mean you're going to get it? No, but once you have that mutation within your body, how you feed your body, your mental, your emotional state, how you're living in alignment with your life, that has a big factor on it. So it's, it's emotional, it's environmental, it's, it's, you know, what you eat, how you die, our PHS, how you digest life, are you digesting your life the proper way? So all of these things come in to line. And again, you're right, it does not mean you're going to get sick. But if you are, it gives you kind of a place to start looking for a root cause or someplace to bring the doctor to say, here you go. And um, I do want to tell one more story. I met a woman online. She wanted to do my um, my free evaluation. And so I gave it to her and she came back. She says, this is incredible. And she said, here's my DNA panel or my DNA. Here's my amino acid panel. Here's this. Everything you told me was spot on. How did you know this? And so I went through it with her and I said, who is your doctor? Because I can't find doctors who are willing to run amino acid panels or, you know, vitamin amino acids. They test for a few little ones here and there. She says, I gave up on doctors. I was so sick. I found a guy in Australia who healed himself. And now he's teaching people to heal themselves. And he has the amino acid test. So it was just like, whoa, you know, there's, there's the synchronicity right there out of the blue, this lady finds me. Wow. And that's a person you need to get in touch with because he probably has a lot of documentation on the amino acid tests. So yeah. I kind of put it out to her because I'm here to respond. Right. And so I put it out to her and I figured if he's the right person, he will come into my life. Exactly. As well. That's exactly what you do. So I'm going to pull up this next slide and I do want to add my story here as well, really quickly about the gate 28. That is my Achilles heel. And if you guys know the gate 28, that is all about struggle. So that means I'm programmed and downloaded to struggle every night, not every night, but a lot through my dreams. And this is a gate that I have always related to that I don't have in my waking life. Some of my greatest struggles, I've always knock on whatever there is to knock on, because every time I say this, I, I get sick, but I, I generally have had a really healthy body and life. But there's, if there's one issue that I've ever had, it's with muscles, muscle tears, muscle issues, bones and breaks. Like when I, and this is when I was young. So when I was, you know, an athlete, the struggle came through injury. And so I was constantly injured. And this is related to the 28, the goat, the, the codon and the 28. But I remember researching it and it had to do with the muscles and tendons and bones. And I was like, crazy. Oh, it's arginine, arginine and a genetic acid is what it is. Thank you. Just very briefly, and if there's anybody out there that understands DNA and the way it works, you're probably going to laugh at me because this is just a very like kindergarten overview of it. But basically, there are 61 gates within the I Ching that are directly related to specific proteins or amino acids. Or, and the amino acids form to make the proteins. And then there are three gates which are called stop codons, gates 12, 56, and 33. They have no amino acids attached to them. And then gate 41 is the start codon, which is actually the start of the, the new year within human design, correct? Yes. So the start codon basically tells 
the process of, of going out and creating the amino acids, when to start, and the stops tell it when to stop making them. And there's different processes. And what I'm finding is not so much with the start codon, but with the stop codons, it really messes people up if there is a um, mutation in that process. It's almost like they seem to be more sick uh, because their body's not telling them, you know, when to start and when to stop the process. And basically, again, from a very basic explanation, DNA is the codon strand. And it tells at the bottom of it, there's something called mRNA. And DNA says, this is what I need to survive. And then mRNA goes out into the body and finds all of the proteins and minerals and whatever it needs in order to form the proper um, recipe for the proteins it needs. This process is called methylation. When there is a breakdown in the methylation process, maybe everything you need isn't there for the mRNA to, to make the proper recipe, it comes back with something that's mutative and attaches it to that DNA, and that's when a mutation can happen. Now, my understanding that there are things within our body that's supposed to help fix the, the methylation process, but when that breaks down, and you get enough mutations because all 20 of these amino acids work hand in hand when you cannot make the proper recipe that your body needs, mutation occurs and that's when disease occurs. And if at that point it's reversible, I don't know. I know there is like a point of no return. My girlfriend with ALS, my girlfriend with MS, they actually know that these are a mutation in the DNA, but it's too late at that point. Had they have been caught 10 years ago when they were having these symptoms that nobody understood what was going on, could it have been stopped? Perhaps, you know, and it's, it's a very, you start reading it and you want to feel like you're not smart, especially when you have the, the gate 48 always looking for that 16. You're like, oh, no, this is way over my head. So um, the DNA mutations, they can occur through genetics. They're passed down through genetics. Like I said, like if you're predisposition for diabetes or gray hair in my case, like this is a DNA mutation. Um, it the diet then, you know, you get it from your, your parents and then you take it into your body and you have your own trauma, you have your own diet, you have your own lifestyle, you have your own environment and that starts morphing it. Um, and what I am finding through all of this is because almost every one of these diseases can be traced back to DNA codon, but the doctors aren't seeing it. Very few doctors work in DNA genetics. And like my doctor had the smoking gun, like it couldn't have been written out any more perfect, but I have to believe that it was meant to work out for me this way in order to make this discovery um, or else I wouldn't have seen it because it was, you know, it was the nose on my face. So um, yes, most doctors are treating symptoms. They don't even run the full amino acid or vitamin panels. That's something that you would have to be willing to get for yourself and then find a doctor who understands it. Right. And one of the things I think is going to be really fun is as we um, also look into the, so the correlations, this next slide is the correlations thus far that, that Vicki has found. I'm really excited for you to share about this. But I'm also excited is as we go to continue this on in the four radical transformations, as we go through diet and the digestion, to just kind of contemplate and see where this stuff is playing out as well. Yeah, once I started looking at the Achilles heel gates, it's almost like you get tested. Okay, now there's no Achilles heel gate, but this person's sick. Where are you going to go from here? So I started looking and you kind of gave me the aha about split gates. Well, 
especially splits in between um, two open centers seems to be a big one. Um, the number of activations, because some people don't have Achilles heel gates and the most I've ever seen anybody have is three and that person was very sick. Oh, um, really? Wow, yeah. that's an interesting aha because that is something that we hadn't really thought about was how many Achilles heel gates that you have and how deeply you're programmed with that sensitivity. That is really interesting. I have two ladies that both have MS and they both have two Achilles heel gates and they both have splits. Wow. And they both have a stop coat on. So it's like, you know, completely different people, not related or what have you, but both of them have MS and one of them actually has seizures. And, and so there is absolutely a correlation that I'm seeing. Um, then there's the activations within a specific gate. For example, I have the 19 twice in my waking chart and I have it twice in my sleeping chart. Sometimes like you could, I, I think I found somebody that had like seven or eight activations. And when we went back, we found the correlation there. And then upon more research, I went, oh my gosh, look, within the different lines, there's disharmony within the lines. So if you have, you know, five or six activations, but you have a disharmony within that line, there seems to be a correlation there. And there seems to be a correlation with the start and the stop codons. Okay, so again, let me back up because this is really important information. What Vicky is saying is, if you have, let's say for example, you have the gate 19, like she was talking about, in the waking, and you have it in the dream. But in the dream, you have it in a line five. And in the waking, you have it in a line three. Then we turned this, and this was Lauren, who started this term we got, was the slight Achilles heel. Because it's not a full-blown Achilles heel, it's slight, which means that it has to do with how the lines are interacting. So it's a little bit more subtle, but there is still an Achilles heel in how the dynamic of the five is going to work with the three. And if those are in disharmony, you're going to see it more, right? Wow, that was just this aha because I totally saw my mutant death gates kick in because I don't ever remember having that conversation. I thought I came up with this all by myself. <laughs> so thank you, Lauren. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting because the more I look at it and then sometimes you get somebody and they might have, you know, they're a, a triple split or a quadruple split. Um, the, the lady with, one of the ladies with MS, she's a quadruple split, split. And it's just almost kind of intuition at some point. Like where, where is the gate that you feel is, is most, you know, that electric impulse is just always going, trying to bridge that split. And you look at it and it's like, there it is, you know. Yeah, so as you guys can see, one of the things that's really fun about allowing for this type of magic and synchronicity and exploration to happen and within the container that this all happened in, we see we also were doing level four as well. Lauren and Vicky were doing both. But I think that when you let the magic kind of unfold, everybody starts having powerful ahas, synchronicities, and magical experiences within the context of the container, right? And so it's a pretty magical experience is what I'm saying. This has been an absolutely magical experience. And I believe that it's just the beginning. I really, truly do. I believe it's just the beginning. Now, what Lauren and I have been doing is in these interviews, we we talk, we ask questions, we blah, blah, blah. This is a little different because we're just focusing on the codons, but we then do the big chart reveal. 
Now, you guys have already seen Vicky's charts because we showed it with the Dream Rave, but we're still going to do another big reveal and we're going to share some things in the chart. But before we do that, we have a couple more slides. Vicky, what do you feel? Let's see. I think we could probably go through these pretty quickly. So why don't you go ahead and let me know where you are with these and I'll. All right. This is one of the women that I was talking about. Um, she has a split and then she has um, two different Achilles heel gates. She has the five and the 42. The five is the Theranin, which is muscles. And she has the multiple sclerosis. It specifically talks about that. And the gate 42 with leucine, which is also muscles, MS, and she's had seizures for years. So, um, and she just got diagnosed because for years she's been going to the doctors and the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on with her. She also has the gate 56, which that should actually say stop code on. So something in her body isn't, you know, telling the process to stop because sometimes with the amino acids, it's too many amino acids or not enough. So you also have to know that. Then she has gate 43. Then I went to her splits. So she has um, 43, which is asparginine, depression and confusion. She's actually just been, she's been confused for a long time, very foggy thinking. Then you go to gate 17, that's arginine. She has sundowners or dementia and muscle cramps. Her legs literally just cramp up. I mean, she's in a lot of pain. And then I also wanted to point out that this did not necessarily show up in her DNA codons, but she also had her thyroid removed several years ago. And this is where her split is in her throat, a full channel and two gates. So when it keeps happening, one or two times, it's a maybe, but when it continues to happen over and over and over again, there's something there. Okay, what am I missing here? So, just for clear, so I'm clear, where mm -hmm. are you getting the gate 56 and the gate 17? So the 17, you're talking the split? So the yes. fact that you're talking the split. So yes. okay, so what you're saying is it's not that she has those gates. What she's saying is those are where the splits are happening, and those are the gates that have that particular amino acid. Okay. Correct. It's the open gates where she doesn't have them because if you think about it, you've got that 62 and that 23 and I just threw in the 56. I don't know why I didn't do the, oh, I know I did because it was a start code on just to show you the start code on. But if you think about the 62 and this 23, there's a split between her ashna and her throat and that electricity, that electromagnetic is always looking for that connection. And over the years, as we age, you know, electricity, it, it creates, I believe it creates a breakdown. And that's where I'm seeing a lot of this happening. Right, right. So, yeah, so that's the clarification here is places in the chart, in the waking chart, okay? So we're switching off here just a little bit. The The sleep we were saying that's where we're looking the Achilles heel and the line and seeing the correlation there. And then in the waking chart, what it has been is one of the most prevalent was the splits, but there are other areas as well. There's other areas as well. You know, the, the Achilles heel gate in the sleep chart was kind of like the, the start of it. It was the spark. It, it was the spark because the thing is that's so interesting is that is a deeper darkness within the waking rave, according to Ra, that we just don't talk about that often. And so the codons are talked about, okay? And they are talked about, but not in this realm. And we happen to witness it because we were in the dream rave. So had we talked about the codons in a different world, we may or may not have seen that really deep correlation and that sensitivity. So that's 
what makes this so magical? Yeah. So I think this is your last slide, Vicki. Is there anything else you want to share on this? No, this was just my imagine as to where we're going through this is that imagine our world if we all lived in alignment with our human design. And the difference in our world's health problems, if people were aware of this from the very beginning, um, imagine if maybe this sparked something within the medical community to actually start running amino acid and vitamin panels when people have unexplained pain. Fibromyalgia is in the amino acids. And, you know, a lot of times my understanding is fibromyalgia is just the name they give you for unexplained pain. You know, so, and then if, if through all of this, imagine if the FDA would quit allowing us to be slowly poisoned through additives and Roundup, like all of these things, because I don't know it factually, but I know it intuitively. Yeah. A big part of this is through the Roundup and the GMO foods, and those start with a genetic mutation themselves around them. Yeah, so powerful. And 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 one of the places that you personally, if you're listening to this and you're getting excited and you're getting turned on, one of the places you can start personally is by looking at your own chart, your charts of your children, those people around you, and discovering where your sensitivities, your Achilles heel are, and being willing to look at it from a different perspective, because that's where it all starts. It's going to start right here with the people and also learning about the amino acid and looking for people like your friend talked about. There are some health professionals that are running amino acid panels. And so these are the places, if you're listening to this, where you want to start looking and what you can maybe participate in this in your own experiment as well. Yes. Absolutely. And I was just going to say that if people do not feel comfortable doing that themselves, I am offering a free chart review um, as part of this for as many people as I can get to. Yes. So we are, Lauren, what did you want to say? Because we are going to share Vicky's stuff we're going to do her chart then we're going to share how you can get in touch with her and if you want to do this this is really a special opportunity for all of you all i wanted to say as you're getting vicky's chart ready is that you know it like some people may may hear this and think like oh like this is depressing i have all these things or all this potential for these things but really knowledge is power and this gives you an awareness on how there are alternative ways of healing with the with the different types of medical professionals that we're talking about or our Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. And, you know, it can just really open you up to this beautiful experience. That's all I wanted to say. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do think this is you know, this is really, it's very timely because this is, you know, I feel an important piece in human design that's been missing is this place of learning that we have the power to heal ourselves and that we have the power to align to health techniques that move beyond the the fear, the doubt, the limitation that we see in the current healthcare system. Come 2027, we know that the healthcare system is already breaking down, but it's going to be breaking down further. And some people are already looking outside of the medical model to find ways to heal. And so this is an additional little piece to the puzzle that you can experiment with. For all of you who are mutants like us. So here is Vicky's beautiful chart. And as you can see, she is a hundred percent mutant. Now, from my perspective, from my observation, and the way I've been noticing and seeing charts, is that the channels have a much bigger impact as far as these 
realms of individual, tribal, and collective than running all of the gates. Now, yes, she has tribal gates. Yes, she has collective gates. When I say 100% mutant, it's because her two main channels are not just individual channels, okay? She has the 360, which is the channel of mutation. And in BG5, in the business realm, she is the CEO leader to innovate business, okay? She's having a calling here in human design and so this is a realm where she is here to thrive. And for us to actually see this unique contribution, this is what I feel that we're here to do today, is to see this unique contribution. And because of this open throat, she's here to share this in a lot of unique ways. A lot of people are gonna hear, it may take a little while, because it's so different, but it will be heard. I don't know if you guys saw John Martin's chart, but he's one of the only other people that has that open throat. Did you see his chart? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lauren, I want to hand it to you. So I love everything that you just shared about Vicky's chart because she does have a way to speak to so many people and break things down in a way that like even I can understand because this is again it's like so over my head and just as you were talking about Vicky I zeroed in on that gate 29 which I believe this is a gate of devotion and just the the level of devotion that I've witnessed Vicky do for her studies and her discovery and the deep dive into herself has been, it's been really amazing to witness and how she's brought it. She was devoted. Like some people may say it was determined, like sending us information about <laughs> the codons she was devoted there was such love and what she was bringing forward and and also as i as i look at her chart i see that gate 13 in her undefined g center and i now i'm looking at all the gates in that g center but that that 13 is like she's really absorbing and listening and taking in all of this intel to to share this collective story of of healing and that gate 25 that universal love that that christ consciousness love healing it's all it's all um this level of human design has really brought you into this is what i'm seeing vicky for you to take it for you to absorb what what your environment is telling you and to really like listen to what the universe is showing you through how you always notice the synchronicities and then bring it out in this very loving and healing way for people. So mm -hmm. that's just a couple things I've noticed about Vicky's chart just now. I love that. So beautiful. So beautiful. I want to add this other really interesting piece because we know that Vicky, she's a four stick, right? That's her profile. And she did share a lot about her three lives, the breakdown, and now she's stepping into the role model. But you're wondering like, where's all this investigation coming thr from? And then at first glance, you might see that 61. We know it's off an undefined head and we know that it's red. And sometimes that's the pressure to think about things that don't matter. And there's like a searching and a looking, but I want to take this on a deeper investigation because now that she's been able to go to the depth and she's been able to go to her emotional um, and really begin expressing those emotions, which I am telling you, I've watched her go deep and deep. And we know the emotional being cannot be surfaced. They have to go deep. What happens the deeper and deeper and deeper you go is something turns on underneath the surface, which is going to get more and more for her, which is her motivation of one, which is that is a deeper investigator than the profile. Okay, so the motivation is the freaking color of the whole chart. It motivates everything. 
And that is the investigator. The very first investigator is this. It, and, and if you don't know the four radical transformations, fear is not fear. It's not where you're afraid. It's the curiosity to learn. It's the very first educational form is to learn what is out there and you will go deeper and deeper and deeper with the curiosity. And as long as you are learning through curiosity, then for Vicki, who's got three right arrows, right? She, this is the future. This is the visionary of the future. And when I see right arrows like this, I know that they are seeing what is to come. Mm -hmm. And then we see all of the mutation that she is holding through this curiosity. So that I wanted to really point that out, that future-facing visionary, because I want you guys to see all of this from a deeper level which is stemming from the depth of the motivation here. Wow. Wow. She sounds like an amazing woman. <laughs> I know. Who is this woman? No. <laughs> it's always so interesting to hear people talk about you because it's true. What Ross says is your energy is just your energy. So you don't even recognize it. Like, so, but I will say, Raquel, I'll never forget when I was taking your, your classes on the different lines and you were talking about the shadow of the one, I was sitting there going, why do I have the shadow of the one? I don't understand it. And then, um, another Lauren pointed out my line one motivation. And then I was like, oh my God. And so that one came up and then. I was like, well, wait a second. Now I got to fix the line one shadow, the line four shadow, the line three shadow, and the line six shadow. That's not fair. <laughs> so. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a shadow in every single thing we have on our chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah, and also, didn't we see... Where else did we see the line one? We saw the line one in other places in the chart as well. So what she's talking about is the profile. What we're doing is we're looking at the underbelly of the profile, okay? And so the underbelly of the profile is leading you almost in a not-self theme in each one of the lines. And... You weren't the only one, by the way, that was seeing the line one shadow, but obvious, but obviously, or for people who are new to human design, you're also going to see the line one shadow in any gate that has the line one. It's not going to be as intense as the motivation because the motivation colors everything. And the gate is going to cover that particular astrological influence. Oh, absolutely. And when you're here to mutate, and I have now recognized this pattern throughout my whole life, is when you're here to mutate and that kind of light goes on, you just go deep, very deep. Well, you go deep. <laughs> <laughs> you go deep. Um, and that's, you know, the and this 35, this provocation, I do have to tell you, Vicki has provoked the right spirit in me. And so I want to thank her for doing that. I want to hand it back to Lauren before we tell you guys where and how to connect with Vicki and let her kind of um, share her final whatever's coming up forward for her on the chart. And then we'll let you guys find out where you can get in touch with me. I wanted to just Vicki, thank you for your courage to go deep and to explore this curiosity at such a deep and profound level. This is, I'm feeling very much your purpose. And that that 360 channel, it is so intense. And I'm just, I'm remembering how Raquel said something so profound about this experience. She said, you know, like first the individual has is going to mutate, but someone with the 360 is really like they have to mutate. And if I hadn't, like Raquel, just paraphrasing you, you said, if I wasn't 
if I hadn't have responded well to what Vicky brought forward, or if I didn't, if I wasn't able to recognize her, if I judged what she was doing, I wouldn't have been the right teacher for her because her design is to mutate. So I just, we're mutating together. That's exactly it. So a mutator needs to mutate the path of another right and so davidian has a lot of mutation and he mutated my whole life you know he changed the whole direction of my life and if he has a ton of people that don't mutate with his intel mm -hmm. and that's an incredibly frustrating experience for a 3955 which vicky has as well because they're here to bring that provocational change and so we know we're the right people when you get to be mutated by the mutator. So <laughs> Vicki, why don't you um, tell everybody how to get in touch with you and I'll pull up your final slide here as well. Absolutely. I'm um, your unique design. I'm on Facebook under that name. And I'm also my website, youruniquedesign.com and it's Y-O-U-N-I-Q-U-E. Um, dot com, your unique design dot com. And then on my homepage, you could click on it and it brings you to my amino acid study. And all you have to do is fill out a form. There's no obligation. Um, now, if I get several hundred of them, like I don't know what the response is going to be, but I will do as many as I possibly can. And it's basically just looking at your chart and letting you know what it is that I, I have found. So um, it's youruniquedesign.com backslash gobsmacked because that's exactly what I was, was gobsmacked with this information. Um, or again, just on my homepage and just under the home tab. So I would um, love to talk to you. I would love to look at your chart because the more information in and in intel that I get, the more I can look at proving or disproving this theory, whichever it is, it's not up for me to decide, you know, it's at the end of the day, the data is going to tell me what I need to do. So, um, and with that, thank you so much, ladies. I am so honored and it's been such a joy to have you in my life because when I lost that six part of me or when my six broke down, I, I lost my whole foundation. I lost everything. Nothing went the way it's supposed to go with the four. And so you guys have really helped me to start um, getting back to myself and building that foundation. And I so appreciate it. It's truly my honor. I remember when we were planning for Tulum and I told you, oh, there's someone else in Austin. And you're like, put me in touch. <laughs> and that's part of my gay 46 is also draws people together. I want you guys to know that the, that people in this community start businesses together, start podcasts together. Vicky's going to start a podcast with another one of the uh, members. And it is, a, it's because of the time and the depth that I like to go to with my community. This is no joke for me. This is my lifelong joy. And I am a person who has lifelong friends and relationships, and this is what I love to do. And the fact that we're all three here together after this whole experience with Tulum, you guys came together and we went deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, you know, um, the fact that we're having this full circle kind of experience right here and right now with the three of us together is really exciting for me because that is one of the things I love the most about this business is that I have a lot of people in my life that don't recognize me and people who are part of my family and part of my community that where I live. And so when I have my community that recognizes me and I get to recognize them, it's, it's beyond heart fulfilling. It's, it's, it, it, it nourishes every single part of our cell and our being and our consciousness. And it's the greatest joy for me to recognize you as well. And it's the greatest joy for me to have Lauren here and, and her insights and her psychic ability and and 
having you guys be friends and knowing each other. It's a frigging divine. So I love you both. And I'm just really honored to share this journey with you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> you literally gave me my life back. <laughs> so, And I think this is the beginning of a whole new life. This is the beginning of your third chapter. And there's already so many amazing things happening for you as you're sharing about human design and bringing this out to your community. And I hope that this is the beginning of something really big because I really do feel this is freaking huge. So we want to hear now from you guys. We want to hear your experience. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear your comments. So wherever this video is posted, please comment let us know what are your ahas, what is your experience, share with us what you learned from this video as well, because we want to hear from you, and we hope we've inspired other mutants to explore this brand new aspect of human design. So thank you guys so much for being here. We love you, and we will see you on the next event. Bye, everyone.